Welcome to Digital Ship webinar. Today's topic is using wireless communications on board. A case study of how RAM offshore is communicating uh, data inside the ship with the help of scan reach technology. Let me introduce uh, our guest speakers, Ronnie Kvalsvik, Technical and Commercial Manager of RAM Offshore, and John Roger Nessier, CEO of ScanReach. This webinar is sponsored by Telenor Maritime, Otasat Maritel, and Scanrich. Don't hesitate to ask uh, que questions via the Q&A box. And as always, we are starting with Carl Jeffrey, founding editor of Digital Ship, to set some background into the story. Oh, okay, thank you, Vida. So you probably know that doing wireless communications on ships inside metallic structures doesn't work very well, or... If you didn't, then it's quite important to get that point straight at the beginning, because that's uh, quite central to the point here. So, you know, if you've got a Wi-Fi in your house, sometimes you have problems getting Wi-Fi to different rooms. So it's the same on a ship, but it's much harder because the walls are made of metal. And there's lots of people who would like lots of wireless communications on ships. So um, it's be uh, very useful for safety reasons. We can track where people are. And also there's operational things we can do we like wiring up sensors to it, which gets much easier when we can do wireless communications. And we don't need the same sort of system to use for Wi-Fi because we don't need wireless communications on ships at high bandwidth. We can do it with slow bandwidth. So it's a we just needed absolute reliability of making sure the data gets through. So ScanReach is based in Bergen. They've developed a system that does wireless communications on ships. And there's uh, both the communications protocol and the hardware. And uh, we're going to hear, first of all, from the offshore operator, REM Offshore, who's got a fleet of 11 vessels. That's including platform supply, offshore construction, renewables and seismic vessels. And they're going to talk about the pilot project they're doing with ScanReach. This is a system for crew safety. So they've got a construction vessel for subsea and renewables that can have 60 technicians on board. And they've developed a system to track where the crew are at any time. Crew members have a sensor on their wrists, a bit like a watch, and it sort of tracks where they are. So we can uh, find them and assist, and assist them quickly if, if they have any accident. The talk is from Ronnie Paul Kwalsvik, who's the technical and purchasing manager of REM Offshore, which is based in Fosnevag in Northwest Norway. And secondly, we're going to hear from John Roger Nestje, who's the CEO of ScanReach. They're in Bergen. So uh, this device can be used for gathering all kinds of data. We often get lots of questions about sensors for vessel performance in our webinars. That's something that... Um, well, we're going to talk primarily about safety today, but that's something to think about for the future anyway. But I'd like to invite Ronnie to give the opening talk. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Carl. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Ronnie Paul Kvalsvik. Uh, I changed a bit position since last time, so I'm a commercial technical manager in uh, RAM Offshore. Uh, let me see. Your camera is off, Ronnie. I don't know if that's what you meant. Uh, let me see. Okay, I will try to switch it on again. It's not a good day to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> we can manage without it if you doesn't work. Yeah, I think I need to, uh, to do that afterwards. Yes. So I will give you a bit introduction, starting with, with the Roma, uh, RAM Offshore, uh, who we are and a bit about the, the background. Uh, as mentioned, uh, we have today 11 vessels in operation. Uh, I'm offshore is a, you can say it's an old company because it, it's more than 20 years, but it was taken over in the years of 2016 and restarted as the new RAM, show, uh, RAM offshore in 2017. So from 2017 and onwards, we have built up a fleet of 11 vessels. Uh, and we got contract for our first uh, uh, vessel uh, for renewables with Siemens Gemasa that is under construction at the Green Yard Cleven, as you can see here on, on, the, on the photo. So, but we have long experience for, as a work to work operator. Uh, it's our strong focus from owners and top management. Uh, we have dedicated people for this. Uh, and we have, a, as mentioned, a long track record. Uh, so uh, just uh, some pinpoints of where uh, uh, RAM Offshore is today. Uh, we have a modern fleet, efficient uh, management, 
we have new capital and we, we, we're looking for expansion, especially in, within the renewables. We have good on OPEX. Uh, we have a very good uh, relation to charters. We have with us a long uh, and strong track out of uh, officers. And we have a high focus on green technology. And, and the, where we're entering in today, we also have a high focus on digital solutions and new technology, what we're talking about here today. So our head office is in Fustnavog, as mentioned. Uh, and we have a crew office in Ramwana, Bulgaria, and we just established ourselves in Aberdeen uh, with Ram Supply, UK. So that is our office we will start to man up uh, in, in quite short time. A bit about the po uh, pilot project background. Uh, uh, the case here is that we, we was kind of by feeling we're moving from normal, as I say, oil and gas with PSV, uh, with our own crew on board. Uh, and then we're entering into renewables with high number of clients on board. And we had to look at improvement and also to move to digital solutions. So we started a, a dialogue with Scandrich early last year. Uh, and uh, yeah, we enter in as one of the pilot customer uh, where we signed the contract with them in April 2020. Uh, and the fantastic thing here is that with the good communication, we entered into COVID, but the installation was performed in May, June by the crew with excellent support from, from Scandridge. Uh, after the end of this uh, pilot agreement, we, uh, we signed up for, for an inspector. Uh, the next step now is that we will also enter into a contract for a new building, RAM Energy, that will enter into operation in, in 2021. So what we see for benefits is, as mentioned before, we have a high focus to, for digital solutions. We have a high focus in safety. Uh, we had earlier more a uh, manual system uh, both uh, from office side, uh, from the captain on board, uh, we're starting to get like today, we have 62 service technicians from, from Siemens on board. We, we had to find a better solution. So it was just fantastic that Scandridge came in the correct timing for us with, with a solution. And that was a solution that we also could kind of way, uh, support uh, the development into and give our feedback to them to, to, to develop this, this uh, system. Uh, and uh, this gives us full control for all the I, I, uh, ISPS, the gangway control. You have these variables that you will hear more about that we can connect to also open the cabin stores or restrict the area and so on. And it's also fulfilled our requirement that we can easily take for all our crew um, get people on board a crew uh, program and just uh, transfer it into their system. And also, as mentioned, it gives us an instant overview on, of the onboard personnel and can allow immediate and high precision for our rescue team if somebody need, uh, need help. Uh, and this was warmly welcomed also by, by our end client uh, after we presented to them. So, I think the more interesting thing now is to, to learn more about the system. Uh, so I will hand uh, uh, this over now to, to Jon to, to, to explain more in detail. Thank you, uh, Roni. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, together with you. and. Uh, it's a pleasure to be able to um, present uh, for all of you as well. Um, just get my presentation started. Okay, so uh, thank you for having me. My name is uh, John. Uh, and I have been part of the Scanridge since the first uh, ideas started uh, many years ago. 
and uh, I will try to bring you into the technology and give you an uh, overview of uh, how it work, works, uh, how you install it and uh, what it can uh, benefit uh, for uh, the ship owner and uh, the ship management. So um, basically, we will uh, we will uh, dig into uh, uh, one solution that is our first commercial solution, as uh, Ronnie said. Uh, it is the the Connect POB, uh, so Connect Personnel on Board, uh, that we will dive into uh, today. So um, a short introduction first, uh, and then what is uh, Connect POB? And then uh, what opportunities will the future bring when you have uh, the Scandridge on board? Um, a bit about ourselves. Uh, we are, as Carl said, uh, a company based in Bergen, Norway, West Coast. We are about six years old. Uh, today, 25 employees. And uh, we have offices in Trondheim, Denmark, and Singapore. Uh, so we are uh, growing uh, out to the world and uh, bringing this to the, to the maritime uh, industry worldwide. Uh, so our mission is uh, based on uh, a, um, um, a vision uh, of uh, a safer um, life for seafarers uh, all over the world. Uh, and that is uh, in our backbone. Uh, we would like to help uh, to increase the safety. And that is the reason behind the personnel on board control system. Um, so I think we will start with a video uh, and uh, give you a quick insight to, to the solution. Welcome to a new era of maritime safety. ScanReach Connect POB, the onboard connected safety solution. When accidents happen at sea, it is crucial to get an immediate and accurate overview of the situation. For the safety of people on board, it is essential that everybody is accounted for. With Connect personnel on board, Emergency management can quickly locate personnel in any training or emergency situation. During mustering, Connect POB provides an automatic count of people at the muster stations. People that do not muster are easy to find, allowing an immediate, high-precision response by search and rescue. When every second counts, saving time means saving lives. Onboard emergency management is provided with the full overview but data can also be brought to shore or nearby vessels for assistance. The discrete wearable device ensures personnel are always connected and easy to locate. The device is equipped with a distress button, allowing personnel to alert distress at any time. Connect POB utilizes a unique and certified wireless network specialized for the maritime industry. For the first time in history, we have made it possible to send wireless data through complex steel environments, enabling instant localization of people on board. When installing Connect POB, full onboard wireless connectivity is obtained without expensive cabling. Installation is completed in hours, even while the vessel is in operation. Your ship becomes digitally ready, allowing it to connect to not only people, but in the future, cargo, equipment, and environmental sensors. The full product package is easy to install, configure and use. Remote updates and dedicated support ensure future-proof functionality and carefree ownership. With Connect POB, get the benefits of efficient emergency handling, training and operations, as well as a safe, digital-ready and high-performance ship. ScanReach Connect POB, the onboard connected safety solution. Welcome. To the new era of marriage. Yes, so um, the basic behind it is that uh, um, we would like to help uh, the people in charge on board the vessel 
uh, to quickly locate and account for all people on board. And that uh, is something uh, we believe strongly will increase the safety and the logistics of, of people on board during uh, emergencies and uh, as well drills. In addition, we have uh, a distress button on each and every variable. Uh, and that is a safety uh, device for each and every crew member uh, in case uh, they are uh, stuck somewhere, uh, uh, getting ill, uh, and they are in some sort of emergency. Uh, they can easily push the button and uh, uh, the, the bridge will be announced that uh, there is a person uh, in emergency and uh, they can easily find him on board. Um, I would like to emphasize as well the, the installation of this because that has been a clue for us in the development of the solution. Um, um, uh, to make the safety uh, system easy to install um, uh, has been very important for us. Um, hence, um, uh, the installation is done without any cabling. Um, these radios that we have will be will be spread around in the vessel. Um, you can walk around in the vessel uh, and during hours uh, you can put it up and, um, and the wireless network will uh, set it up uh, by itself, uh, the network, and uh, you will be in, uh, in uh, operation with the system uh, uh, quite easy. It can be done by the people on board and the crew themselves with uh, some guidance uh, from, uh, from us in ScanRidge. Um, some examples from uh, installation. Uh, you can see uh, probably best on the uh, dome left picture. Uh, it is a radio uh, put up on the wall, a small radio. You can see it there compared to a socket outlet. And uh, it's plugged into the wall socket for um, uh, constant charging uh, because um, all these radios, they have internal battery backup uh, because during an emergency situation, you may not have uh, the main power. Uh, it may, may be a blackout on board. So our, our system is then designed to uh, to stay alive for uh, for um, at least uh, 24 hours uh, during uh, during an emergency situation. So um, uh, on the bridge you have the tablet, uh, as you see on the the picture uh, uh, down uh, to to the right of of the the former picture, um, and that is the tablet on the bridge where you have a map of the vessel uh, and where you can see. Uh, in an emergency where people are and uh, where they are moving towards the muster stations or if somebody is uh, stuck somewhere or uh, left behind. Uh, and uh, up on the right uh, corner a picture you can see on uh, outside uh, box uh, due to the uh, splashing sea we need something to, to cover our radio. Um, uh, so there is a solution for that as well. So when you walk around in the vessel, you can easily put up uh, these radios on the walls. We spread them around in the vessel uh, to put up uh, the complete, uh, complete wireless network. So the components uh, then is, uh, uh, as we now have said, the, the radios, we call them nodes. Uh, you can say beacons or, or um, something like that. That is really the core uh, that uh, established the network uh, on board the vessel. On the left side, you can see uh, uh, the user interface. Uh, you will have that uh, on the bridge. And uh, in fact, uh, on every computer that are connected to, uh, to the onboard network, as well as you have uh, 
uh, we are sending uh, the information to shore as well so the main office can uh, can uh, can follow the systems and, and see uh, the situation on board. And on the right hand side, you can see the verbal uh, uh, verbal device with the, the alarm button, and uh, it gives you the possibility to track uh, people uh, during emergency and as well as training. Um, so. Um, maybe what's more interesting is is really what you see then uh, so um, basically the the tablet that you see uh, will uh, uh, always on the bridge show you how many people are on board at any given time um, and um, it will then give you an alarm if somebody pushed the alarm button um, and you have as well uh, the same um, uh, user interface available on, on the computers on bridge and, and any computer that are on the network uh, on board. And um, on that computer and on, on the picture, you can see then the, the map of the vessel based on the general arrangement. And we indicate where people are uh, on board. Uh, and uh, if you are missing someone, then uh, you can avoid to search throughout the complete vessel. Uh, you can send the emergency team, uh, uh, the firefighting team uh, to the correct location and to pick up uh, the people that are missing uh, in an emergency situation. And it makes it easier to do drills as well. Uh, we uh, even have feedback from some customers that they increase, uh, uh, they do drills more often because it helps them a lot to, to understand the, the efficiency uh, of uh, mustering and the emergency situation. Uh, and then uh, the distress part, if, if somebody is pushing the distress button, you will be given an alarm. Uh, there is one person in distress. Uh, then you have a look at the map and you see immediately where this person uh, are. Uh, and you can go directly, uh, saving a lot of time, go directly to where this person are and, uh, and uh, give the help that is needed in the situation. And then again, during mustering, uh, we as well have a automatic uh, count uh, on mustering. Um, the, sh the ship management can, will um, uh, by themselves define uh, which uh, places on the vessel is uh, defined as a mustering station. And as you see in this picture, uh, in this actual situation, there are uh, 22 people that have not mustered yet. And on one of the mustering stations, you can see on the left side, there are 12 people that have mustered. There is one person very close by, so he will probably be mustered quite soon. Um, and you are um, uh, waiting for the 22 uh, to muster. So we believe that this is a really good uh, tool for, uh, for both uh, emergency drills, training, and as well, if uh, the situation, a real situation should occur, uh, I believe it will uh, relieve uh, a lot of uh, stress uh, by understanding where the people are and if somebody are missing and where the missings are. Uh, in addition, we have something uh, quite uh, new developed, uh, Connect Fleet, uh, that is a tool for the uh, main office. Um, so uh, that is a tool that uh, the managers of, uh, of uh, uh, the complete fleet uh, can have a look at in their office. They can see the status of the system. There is a lot of functions in this as well, where they can uh, uh, full of uh, the situation if if there are an emergency situation on board and look at the status of, of the system as well. Important topic is uh, certifications and approvals um, and uh, 
uh, our solution is uh, the equipment is is uh, type approved by the NVGL, uh, and we um, uh, have uh, as well uh, a company um, certification for ISO 9001, in addition to um, a business management system that uh, is according to the uh, EX approval from ISC and uh, and um, ATEX. Um, uh, requirements and and that's uh, something we have uh, as well for our variables all the variables uh, are uh, uh, explosion proof uh, ISEX and ATEX um, uh, approved uh, so if you have um, maybe for a rig uh, and even vessels with the uh, serious areas uh, you can install and, and utilize uh, this um, mesh network uh, that we have, including the, um, uh, the safety system. Um, and um, different uh, areas of usage, you uh, just saw a oil rig or a platform on the last picture. And this picture you can see an offshore wind farm um, it is quite easy for uh, our solution to be extended to an offshore wind farm um, with the radios inside uh, every uh, uh, of these uh, turbines. Um, you can see where people are uh, and uh, you can even get an alarm if somebody are in distress. Uh, and it's make it a bit more easy for the vessel to pick up the people uh, when the day is uh, over. So uh, the graphical user interface for, for that uh, part will be something like this, um, where you can, uh, can see the, the complete uh, wind park um, uh, in your user interface with the personnel um, uh, highlighted. Uh, so, looking into the future, uh, there is a lot of uh, things uh, going on uh, on uh, digitalization and uh, the um, requirements for, for more and more uh, correct signals and data. Uh, so, um, our mesh network uh, is uh, uh, as well uh, very well prepared for utilization uh, for other type of signals as well. Um, and um, all this data you will have, uh, of course, on, on, on board, on the bridge, in the engine room. Uh, we distribute uh, all these uh, signals so you can have it uh, on shore in your main office. Um, so, um, the mesh network, uh, the wireless network we put on board uh, will open up for a lot of uh, opportunities uh, uh, in the coming uh, time. So uh, just to give you a, a snapshot of our roadmap uh, for uh, this year, um, you can see on the lower part here, we have the connect POB, which is the safety part. Uh, on, on that uh, product that uh, Ronnie has on board, uh, the, there will be rolled out uh, a, a training module uh, before summer. There will be a reporting. Uh, we have fall detection uh, that we will roll out in September. Uh, and that is a system that will detect if somebody is falling uh, on board. Uh, if there has been an accident and they are perhaps not able to uh, push the alarm button themselves, we will uh, nevertheless give an alarm to the bridge that somebody has fallen and they are laying still. Um, gangway control, um, we have put up in October. It will probably be earlier, but uh, uh, it's scheduled for October, as we say now, and that is uh, that is controlling uh, people walking uh, over the gangway to and from the vessel. And later on is a bit more difficult one. That is a man overboard solution that is, will as well be a feature on the safety part. Um, 
on the upper part of this one, you can see the more uh, the signal part connect um, connect to uh, to anything more or less. Uh, we have started uh, uh, a program for uh, livestock carriers. We will try to uh, to make that uh, that part of the business a bit uh, better for the livestock. So we have uh, sensors uh, that we are testing and that will be released during late May uh, for li livestock carriers um, that will, um, uh, we will collect signals from, from the cattle uh, or the sheep on board and, uh, and uh, tell the stress level and uh, uh, then uh, give an alarm if, if something is, is going on uh, by the livestock. Flow is coming later on before summer. Uh, that is a solution that uh, will uh, will um, uh, give the opportunity for the ship owners to put on board a, a flow meter and uh, without any cabling, just uh, pull the data wirelessly from the flow meter and uh, push that data to the bridge and to the shore. Uh, likewise, when it comes to temperature sensing, uh, small, small temperature sensors, you can put them anywhere, glue them on the wall, uh, glue them on a bearing, uh, and we will wirelessly collect the signals and bring those signals to the bridge. And uh, so thereby we, we roll out different type of sensors, gas sensors, vibration sensors, and, and so on uh, during this year. So there is a wide uh, variety of, of, um, of signals we will release. And as uh, Ronnie Paul said, they have, they have the system on board, uh, they have the network on board, uh, so they are very well prepared to, to pick and choose from, from, the, uh, from the solutions that we will roll out uh, during uh, uh, the rest of, uh, of this uh, year. So uh, that was it for me um, from the solution side. Oh, well, that's, thank you very much. Well, I'd like to invite the audience to open the Q&A box at the bottom. You'll see there's 10 questions there already. You can upvote other people's questions so we can see what people are most interested in. Um, I mean, there's two questions I'd like to ask just to, to begin with. Well, one is, so the actual protocol itself, you didn't explain it. I don't know if that's secret, but I imagine it's a bit like these subsea communications. So you can get radio through steel. You just got to have high power, low bit rate, low frequency. Is that... I don't know if that's going into your confidentiality. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if uh, probably I am not deep enough into the technology to to reveal anything secret anyway. But uh, All right. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, no, it, it is a combination of uh, several um, uh, things we have done that uh, makes this possible. Uh, one obvious thing is that we do not have one large beacon trying to to really penetrate the complete uh, vessel with only one uh, uh, what you would do with a Wi-Fi beacon, so to say. Uh, so the, the most obvious thing is that we have uh, a lot of radios, small radios uh, that we uh, distribute throughout the vessel and put up a mesh network. Um, we have tried out uh, all the, uh, almost all the mesh networks that are available uh, in the commercial uh, market, uh, but no, no, uh, no one really worked to our uh, satisfaction. So we had to make our own protocol uh, inside uh, the mesh node. We have made the, the hardware and the software and the firmware all by ourselves, um, especially um, uh, adapted to the maritime industry and to the steel uh, construction that a vessel and a rig uh, is. Um, and as well as the frequency, um, uh, we are uh, operating sub gigahertz uh, on the open band. Uh, so we are, uh, 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 we are penetrating um, uh, throughout the vessel uh, better than a gigahertz uh, solution. Oh, very good. The other question I was going to ask, uh, Benjamin Darville from Torm has just asked it as well. Um, I've seen there's lots of equipment manufacturers asking questions, so they must be thinking if they can build on top of your system. So are you open to this, where your system becomes a kind of platform and other people can come up with their own ideas and software? And 
Yeah, definitely. That's our main goal. Uh, okay. We we uh, we are looking forward uh, to uh, to be able to uh, uh, connect uh, almost uh, whatever uh, type of sensors. Um, uh, of course, we need to uh, in some way control uh, the amount of data to prioritize the data. Um, but um, uh, we are uh, uh, Bluetooth ready. Uh, so we are utilizing Bluetooth uh, as per today. Uh, so uh, so um, sensors that are distributing their signals on Bluetooth uh, can easily be, uh, be connected to our system. As well as we are working with the 4 to 20 milliamps uh, connection, uh, CAN bus, mod bus uh, type of connections as well. Uh, so the idea is that we we shall really be be able to to connect to uh, to a lot of uh, different sensors. We will not make sensors ourselves because there is a lot of good uh, off the shelf uh, sensors when it comes to fuel and vibrations and temperature and and almost anything. So so we will just uh, we will just be the the partner that brings the signal uh, from the sensor uh, and collect all these signals and bring them to the bridge and to shore. Oh, that's great. So maybe we'll bring Ronnie back and if you can answer Eirik Stensvik's question. So he's the project manager of special projects with PGS. He's asking if there's any uh, crew privacy issues or people are being concerned about being tracked or is it just something that you bring up when there's emergency? Ronnie, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, we, we had this discussion uh, initially uh, as well, because we also had the same word. But uh, as I understand, you don't only have an ID, and it's only the captain that could see who is uh, who is the person that gives a distressed alarm. And uh, so, so the privacy is taken care of uh, in that aspect. Oh, so, so nobody was bothered about being tracked the whole time, I guess, it's work environment. So it's uh, reasonable you want to know where people are. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is, all, of course, a challenge, and it was uh, really discussed with the captain for, uh, from our side as well, because it's like kind of a, if you can utilize this to increase safety, but I, I understand the question, because you can see if somebody is lazy and sitting in the cabin as well. <laughs> it's always a, a balance, but uh, the main t target for us is, is, of course, the safety aspect of it. And... Uh, and as long as it's controlled by the bridge, uh, we are not worried about that. Uh. Oh, okay, so John, so you want to take Garrigan's question? He's a professor of communication systems at Lancaster University. So he's looking for some technical, what well, frequency band? You said maybe you don't want to <laughs> go too far with the technology. What's the maximum range between devices? How many devices per ship? Is that something you... Yeah, uh, well, in, 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 in open air, this can be many, uh, many kilometers uh, of, of range. Uh, but when, at once you put them inside a steel construction, then it's, uh, it's really limited. Uh, and uh, uh, down in the, uh, in the lower part of the vessel, uh, it's, it's, it's very limited. Um, so, I mean, um, it's up to the utilization of, of the network, uh, how many uh, of these uh, radios uh, you will put out there. Um, uh, for, for location purposes, uh, you, need, uh, uh, you need to understand the density of uh, uh, how um, uh, accurate your location will be, because um, on the map, uh, you as a person will be uh, will be shown uh, nearby a radio. So if you have only one radio uh, uh, on one deck, well, then it will only show you on that deck and not in which room you are. If you would like to see exactly in which room everybody are, then you need one in each room. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, but uh, basically for the safety needs, you don't need uh, a radio in, in every, every room. Uh, it's enough for the rescue team to understand that you are within these three or four rooms. That, that, that's, uh, that's a really big shift from searching throughout the complete vessel. So it, it depends on, on the, the level of, of accuracy you want on the location part. And when it comes to uh, only... Um, uh, transporting signals, uh, you don't need that many, 
but we have made these, uh, these uh, radios uh, very cheap and easy to install. So for us, it's, it's better to have a few more than uh, a few less because then uh, it's a bit more reliable when it comes to the signal to um, throughput. Wow. So Dan Rooney from Iridium <coughs> is asking about the battery life. I, I was, um, I've been writing a lot about enclosed space deaths on tankers, and I'm wondering if you could have it in enclosed like tanks where you wouldn't have any power supply. You'd be totally reliant on the battery. I don't know if that's a, something to answer as well. Or... Yeah, it's... Um... Uh, this standard uh, uh, node that we have um, has an internal battery uh, for emergency situations. So, I mean, that will, be, will just last through uh, a period of, of uh, uh, at least 24 hours. Um, however, we have, a, we have a battery um, pack solution as well. Uh, so we build uh, the node into a um, uh, small box uh, uh, together with a battery that will keep the node alive for uh, up to one year. Um, uh, and that's a chargeable uh, battery. So, so it's, uh, it's uh, definitely possible to put this, uh, this node in inside the uh, uh, sealed tanks um, uh, as well. You have to be waterproof as well, but that sounds relatively easy technical problem. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Kumar Sundaram, maybe this is a question for Ronnie. He's the uh, from Anglo Eastern in Singapore. Is asking if you've thought about well, could it be used as a sign in, sign off device? I guess clearly it could be. I don't know if that's something you've thought about doing. Is it for so it automatically fill in your work and rest hours monitoring? Mm, yeah. Uh, it probably could do that. Uh, I'm not been too much involved into that uh, but that could, could probably be done I guess so um, I don't think we have used it for that purpose yet but uh, that could probably be a, be a way forward okay so maybe back to John so from Holger Ritter from uh, Drynet he's asking about pricing feel free not to answer that one I know a lot of times people don't want to answer <laughs> pricing in public Um, he's asking uh is there control and management software? I think you probably showed that later on in your presentation when he asked the question, but uh, um, and he's also asking if you can use it with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and RFID. I think you mentioned you can use it with Bluetooth. Do you, do you want to maybe take all those in, in one go? Uh, yeah, uh, um, the price is, is calculated, uh, in fact, on the number of, uh, of uh, nodes and the number of variables. So. In fact, uh, how many rooms, how big vessel, uh, and how many uh, crew members or people on board uh, will be uh, will be a, a background for for uh, the pricing of this. And this is a subscription that goes uh, every year. We keep it uh, up to date. We upload new software, uh, and if, if the vessel are uh, wherever they are in in the world, we can update the the, the firmware and the software all the way to the variables. So each and every variable uh, can be updated from Bergen. Um, so we will keep it, keep it alive. We will replace the variables when the battery is wearing down. Uh, so that's part of the subscription as well. And it's, it's, typically, uh, it's typically around uh, 5,000 to 10,000 dollars uh, uh, per year. Uh, for the larger vessels, we have some vessels that are uh, around the um, 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 uh, yeah, uh, I mean um, fifteen thousand um, dollars per year uh, if if they are large and uh, not to mention crews yet because uh, uh, we haven't entered uh, really big time into the cruise industry yet but uh, with the number of people and number of rooms that will be uh, a bit uh, different um, price wise as well but in in that ballpark if you say plus minus uh, ten thousand dollars per year you are not far off with with uh, a large portion of of, uh, of the vessels uh, what was the second part? So of the... integrating with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and RFID. You said you do Bluetooth already. Yes, uh, that's correct. We can we can read uh, we can read uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, and we can collect uh, Bluetooth signals. 
uh, we have um, already um, uh, an integration with our RFID, uh, passive RFID. Uh, so giving uh, giving the customer the opportunity to uh, to have this the the door locks for the doors uh, into the same variable, so that the variable can be connected to the door lock system on board and utilizing uh, passive RFID uh, for the door locks together with with, uh, with uh, the, the wristband. Well, and I think Holger's also asking, can you, can you sort of manage the, how well the system is working? So if you can see all the access points on the control system, you know, if one access point failed, can you monitor that remotely or? Uh, say again. Uh, well, so say, say you had a failure of uh, access point. Would you would you know about that from the bridge, or how, how would you how how do you check your own system is working? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, uh, everything is monitored uh, live uh, all the time. Uh, so uh, the system is monitoring the battery status on on each and every uh, variable. Uh, it, it will give you uh, a notification if there are any nodes that are uh, uh, have, have broken down for any reason or is unplugged and is out of battery. Uh, so the system is, uh, is um, uh, self-monitoring uh, um, all sorts of uh, health uh, status, yes. Okay, so maybe we go back to Ronnie now. So Eirik from PGS is asking if you'd consider using this on FRC. I've looked at fast rift rescue craft. I think that's one of these rigid inflatable boats they use as lifeboats and work boats. I don't know why he's saying marine broadband radio. I suppose these boats have got marine broadband radio already. So you want to track if people are on lifeboats or not. Is that something you thought of doing? Yeah, that is a discussion we had with uh, Scandrich also for, uh, for the gangway that we can kind of way have... Uh, uh, have the system working that we can t tell that uh, the people are centering into a, a data craft uh, operation or a, on the TP. Uh, so I think this will come under the same uh, development from, from Scanridge. If this could send signals, then that will be exactly the same, John, I, I believe, as when you put on this on a, a TP that the, the mother vessel can see where, uh, where the people are, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, exactly. So, so that uh, that is uh, definitely uh, on our our uh, technical roadmap as well. So Alan Burke from Asartek in Istanbul is asking how the main office gets told. He's talking about ISM industrial safety medical frequencies. Well, I guess you, you that goes over the main satcom. Does it? Is that for Ronnie as well? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. We we uh, we uh, we are just uh, utilizing the, the normal uh, satcom. It's it's a very very small amount of data that uh, that is going to to tell this this type of information. So we are just relying on the the ship owners on uh, satellite connection. Okay. So Taras Pavliuk from Applied Satellite Technology is asking, how do you connect a, a sensor to the device? So I suppose that's, is that Bluetooth within the tank or the room itself? Or? Um, yeah, uh, this is this is uh, still uh, you could say that the sensors are still under development. But uh, if it is a hardwired uh, uh, connection uh, from a let's say a flow meter, uh, then we are putting uh, one of our radios to that uh, flow meter, and then it's a hardwired uh, connection and uh, then it will be set up uh, in our software and that can be done from Bergen or from any uh, uh, ship owner office uh, uh, or from the bridge engine room. Uh, when it comes to Bluetooth, uh, we are working towards making that really, really easy. Uh, so you just, uh, you just uh, accept new devices into the system if you bring on board new devices. We need to be very conscious about uh, the Bluetooth connection because there, there may be some, <laughs> some other stuff on board that are uh, uh, on Bluetooth and uh, uh, we will not be interfered and we will not interfere others. So uh, we need um, some sort of uh, acknowledge of the sensor. Uh, so we understand that this sensor is in fact a sensor that we shall listen to and bring signals from. And Berger Helia, while well, we stick on Bluetooth, so six questions down. So he's asking about, so if you've got wearable devices using Bluetooth, that drains the battery quite fast. I don't know what Bluetooth LE is. Is it a way to 
Is that good? Yeah, uh, we have Bluetooth on the on the on the variable, uh, and uh, for the time being, the 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 calculated battery life of of the variable is uh, around five years. Uh, so uh, so um, there are no challenges by that uh, um, uh, up to today, uh, and, and that has uh, of course to, to do with the. the uh, how often we we um, distribute uh, the signals. So if you have a constant uh, a radio transmitting, then you will drain the battery. But uh, if we give a ping uh, every now and then, then uh, that is enough for us and for the safety. And uh, that will bring the battery life uh, much longer. Okay, Ronnie, do you want to answer Dan Rooney's question? So you're alerted in the office if there's any problem, somebody presses the emergency button on their wristwatch or something like that as per day we don't ha have any feature like that that uh, that will be taken care of from the bridge size of course oh okay so we've got 10 minutes left i'm not sure we've got seven questions maybe um john roger will, will have to sort of <laughs> maybe maybe might be selective but um so so kuma sundaram is asking can we use 4g in all areas of the ship i think you don't have the bandwidth to that um He's also asking, is there a battery operation that could be used in tanks? Do you want to take those two questions first, do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah, of course, uh, you, can use, uh, you can use normal Wi-Fi on board. You can use 4G on board, um, but you need a cable uh, to the beacon. Uh, you need a cable to the, the, the transmitter. Uh, uh, if it's 4G or if it's Wi-Fi, um, and uh, it doesn't work very well inside the, the steel compartments when it comes to the wireless from room to rooms. So then you need a beacon in, in many rooms, and then you need a cable for it. Uh, so so that's that's a big difference from our solution. We are a cable-less solution. So um, um, yeah, it's it's hard to compare them. And, and the battery question I touched on on that yeah. uh, we have a we have a solution for that where we we have uh, batteries uh, inside the, our uh, uh, enclosure together with the with the radio uh, and uh, as per now that uh, that can last for uh, for up to a, a year and then be uh, recharged. So so Berger Hillert's question. So he's asking. He says mesh is still Wi-Fi, but mesh can use any protocol, I imagine. But the important question is, do you have 100% connectivity assurance, which is very important in safety. I imagine you must do, otherwise you wouldn't be. Uh, yeah, uh, we have, uh, you could say, we have an assurance uh, in the way that if we, uh, for some reason, uh, uh, have lost uh, parts of the network, uh, we will give a notification of that, of course. So as long as all the nodes are up, we can talk to every uh, radio around in the vessel, then the system is healthy and it's okay. And we can then uh, see um, every variable on board. If we have a drop-off, we call it a, a drop-off if a person is then with an uh, uh, outside range, uh, you will be noticed about that as well. Uh, it may happen some, someone has, uh, if someone takes it off and throw it away or, or uh, it has been damaged or, or something, or you are uh, really in a corner where it shows to be no coverage for some reason, that we will give a notification of that. So, uh, so uh, we we have the safety uh, as the backbone in, in the development. So, um, I would say that yes. Oh, okay. So I'll just summarise these last five questions. So Doug Holden is asking if you can take voice through it. I think the bandwidth probably isn't enough. Um, JJ Ungu is asking how do you manage to get through steel? I think we answered that with a slower bandwidth. Um, Rab B. Oh, Raj B. Harry Bajaj is asking, have you thought about using it for diving? And Benjamin and Christian are asking about the, the data limitations. Is that a, do you want to answer the last five minutes? <laughs> yeah, I would say that there is a lot of ideas coming in. Uh, we, we are sorting out the ideas and, and working uh, towards uh, ideas that we believe uh, 
uh, will help the industry best and will help us uh, establish uh, the company in a, in a good way. Uh, uh, so the, all the ideas are, are very welcome and we are working with the new ideas uh, uh, as we speak. Um, so uh, uh, we have not been into to diving uh, and you know when it comes to below water uh, it becomes a bit more difficult. Um, uh, going through steel, I believe I've uh, had a short reply on that. Uh, it is many factors here. We have a lot of uh, beacons. We have a mesh network uh, where every radio talks to any other radio. And, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, a vessel is it's not a, a perfect paradise cage because you have... Uh, you have um, uh, uh, gas caps, you have uh, uh, ventilation channels, you have pipings going through the, uh, the walls. So there are, uh, there are uh, always uh, some sort of possibility for our signals to, uh, to go through uh, the complete steel vessel. And we haven't, so far, we haven't met uh, any area on board any of these uh, big uh, uh, and quite well sealed offshore vessels with uh, watertight doors, firetight walls, uh, divided in separate uh, zones when it comes to redundancy zones and so on. And, and it, it works. It works on, on all these vessels. Oh. Do you want to talk about the, is there a limitation on, on data or how many sensors you can connect to one device? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are obviously a, a data limitation. And uh, we have uh, no, we have not have had focus on, on uh, a broadband solution. Uh, this is not an opportunity to look at uh, Netflix uh, from the steering gear room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, so uh, to be able to do that, you you really need something something else if you if you need a a, a broadband. Uh, but we are in the Internet of Things area. Uh, we are in the narrowband area. Uh, uh, so um, uh, uh, it's it's not a bandwidth, so to say, because you cannot do streaming through this mesh network. Uh, it's based on on a package delivery, uh, so the data is delivered within a package, and then this package will then uh, be received at uh, the central uh, station, the gateway computer at the, the bridge. Oh, can you say, are we talking about bits per second or kilobits per second, do you think? Was that... uh, yeah, that depends on uh, how big network, uh, how many radios and, and so on. So, uh, uh, um, and perhaps I need to have a discussion with my technical team to be able to reply on that. But uh, for all the practical uh, matters that we have put up on the roadmap, uh, uh, it works uh, fine. Uh, but it, it is, as I said, it, it's based on a package of, of, uh, of uh, bytes. Uh, so um, if you want to, to stream uh, something, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, not something we can do. Uh, so if you need, uh, let's say, 16 hertz of uh, continuous data stream, uh, then, it's, uh, then it's hard for us to, to manage that. But, uh, to send the uh, vibration signals, to send the fuel signals, to send temperature, humidity signals, uh, uh, different type of gases and oxygen levels. That is really the area we are focusing uh, on. Wow, that's fantastic. That was fantastic. Well, we're coming up to the, the hour now. I think that's been a fantastic talk. Um, got lots of people thinking creatively about new things we can do with this. And uh, thank you very much. I'll pass back to Vida to close things off. Thank you. Thank you. It was the last webinar of April covering wireless communications to improve safety on board that REM Offshore is trying out. Next week, we are entering into May webinars and we are starting a series on making group planning easier with Fraunhofer on Tuesdays and maritime digital transformation through workflows with Orbit MI on Thursdays. Check out our new production on webinars.thedigitalship.com. We'll see you in May. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.